David, ultimately, what went wrong today? Well, I think when I look at the way they set up, um, we expect them to sort of come at us and they sat deep, uh, almost played like an away team and, and they are quite good on the counter-attack. And the really important thing is when you're, when you're a possession-based team like we are and you're trying to move the ball, you've got to be in position. You know, it's so important and uh, that as, you, as you're trying to move the ball through the pitch that you're in good positions for that counter-attack and uh, it's mad you know you, you, you're going away from home and you, you're worried about a counter-attack situation and and that's how they've done it on the first one uh, and they've switched it quick on the second one and um, you know we weren't really in good positions to, to recover from that so you're 2-0 down um, you know and then you know to have a man sent off at half time uh, this is a big pitch with 10 man this is a big pitch and I thought the lads effort uh, was a valiant one second half uh, we, we give them you know, a couple of problems when we put the ball in the box but um, in key moments first half we moved the ball okay but because they were sat in shape we just need more patience we've got to be more clinical with the ball we've got down the sides of them a few times and um, you know, we couldn't quite have that last pass that was, that was, was just missing uh, we probably didn't have enough bodies in the box for staff as well, so uh, you know we'll look at that and um, you know and make sure that we, we get it right for the next game. But uh, you know that's an uphill task that you know when you're two 0 down with, with ten men, um, you know on this pitch. What happened with regards to the second yellow card issue to Neil Bishop? Because we understand it was given whilst he was in the players' tunnel at half time. Yeah, I clearly saw it. You know, I've come off the pitch. Listen, the referee team, uh, you know, today. This, this Bish, and I don't keep saying it, you know, this guy is he's an, honest, he's an honest player I've worked with. Um, he's, he's totally committed to his profession, and I mean committed. He's one of the best professionals I've worked with. And um, you could see something boil over just before the, before the, um, before the half-time interval. And um, he was aggrieved, he felt aggrieved, and, and rightly so. It was a horrendous tackle on him. Um, it, I don't think it got dealt with proper. Then we goes into the tunnel, and uh, and the two players that was uh, him and Granger that was you know uh, involved in that altercation. Uh, they went face to face. Uh, nobody got in between them. Fourth official was nowhere near it to get in between them. Um, and them two have been allowed to walk off the pitch together after an altercation on the pitch. You know, so listen. It's been handled as it's handled. Granger's put his face into Bishes, and he's put his face into his, and um, he's deemed it a second yellow. So you know, at half time, then you 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 face with going with a different system, uh, changing things to to try and better. And, and honestly, you know, second half, the lads they give everything, and and they give each other everything they had second half to to try and get back in it. The key was was the third goal for me. You know, we we two one up. Sorry, the two one up, and and if it. If that last 10 minutes stays at 2-1 and we give them, it becomes edgy. Uh, but when they got the third one, it just gave them a bit of breathing space, you know, and um, and that probably killed the moment. Listen, we, they fought. We got, we got the second, 3-2. Um, but, you know, Carlisle were the better team on the day and, uh, you know, respect to them because they've come here and uh, we've, we've come up here and they've, they've, they was excellent today. You're not used to being defeated. Only the second league defeat in Skybet League Two this season. How do you and the players react to this? We, you react as um, as like anything. You know, you, you stand up to it. You, you you face what's what's not gone right today. Um, we take the positives out of today. We work on the negatives. We make sure that we we get rid of them mistakes, them errors. Um, you know, teams now are they. We've played every team now, so they know our strengths, they know our weaknesses, they know how we play, um, and they'll raise the game. You know, I thought Kelvin or two today, and uh, Devitt and Hallam Oak were, were the best three players on the pitch. They really raised the game to a, to a fantastic level. So then we've got to go to that level, and we've got to go beyond that. And, uh, and that, now's the next part. This is the business end of the season. Um, you know, we've got ourselves in a good position, but now it's the business end. This is where, you know, you really we all earn our our coin, um, and. We've got to go to that next level. We've got to have improvement in what we do. We've got to be better in what we do. And um, and first half we weren't. We was was slightly off it. So, you know, we we make sure we flush it out, and then we move on. We move on very quick. Um, you know, Bish is beside himself in there. I'll make sure that he forgives himself, and then and then we just move on. You know, and make sure that we uh, we're ready for the next next task, and, and we get it done. Um, and, and the preparation for that will be as good as anything. I mean, over the Christmas period, five games, 
you know, 10 points, two points a game, it's, it's, it's good form. Um, but this next, this next sequence of games, it's going to be really important that we, we improve on what we're doing. It is the business end of the season, as you say. Let's talk transfer business, if we may, as we end this interview here in Cumbria. There has been, as I'm sure you're aware, much speculation about the future of CJ Hamilton. It's been rumoured that uh, championship clubs are interested in him. What can you tell us? Listen, there's been no official bid at the minute. There's been inquiries. Um, there's been inquiries into Greg. There's been inquiries into me uh, for the services uh, of CJ. Um, you know, we're not going to start talking about what clubs. Leave that to speculation. Leave that to media. Uh, we want to do our, our business professional. Um, you know, and, and got to make sure that we're really professional in that. So, uh, listen, he's a player that's courted. There's no, you know, there's no doubt about that. It's, it's no good us trying to hide the fact that uh, clubs want him. Um, I'm just hoping, you know, that it doesn't doesn't affect Siege and, and affect his uh, the way he's been playing, you know, and how he's been thinking because he's really been focused on 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 the team. He's been focused on his individual performances and he's he's been outstanding. Um, but you just wonder, you know, whether agents start just, you know, if there's if there is a payday there for certain people, uh, whether they start affecting what he does and. Uh, CJ, since I've come to the club, and I've said it on many occasions, has been a player that I love working with, I love spending time with, um, and, and he's a player that will keep getting better if, uh, if he keeps sticking to uh, the process, which is development, learning, and being a continual um, seeker of knowledge, and, and that's what he's been doing. He's got the tools, he's, his body's the vehicle um, to get him to you know, the best level he can play at. And, um, you know, it's, it's, that's my job, to, to untap that potential that CJ's got. And as you revealed recently, Tyler Walker, who's on a season-long loan from Nottingham Forest, there's a clause in that deal which states that Nottingham Forest could recall Tyler Walker. What, what's the latest on that? Is, has there been any inkling from the city ground that they might do that? No, not at the minute. We've not had, um, you know, we've not had anything to tell us otherwise. Um, you know, Greg's been continually um, on with that and, and they're, they're really comfy where he's at. Uh, we spoke to his representatives and they've assured me that they're very comfy where Tyler's at. Um, but listen, it's the wind of things can change, Steve. Or, you know, it, it's just how it is. This is. You've got to prepare for all uh, eventualities, all possibilities, and, and that's something that we will be doing. Um, you know, so we're, we're on, we're trying to get in front of everything. Uh, you know, but at times you can't be in front of, of, of anything because there's different possibilities, different eventualities. Very finally, and I thank you for your time, on Thursday you met with Greg Abbott, the new head of football operations, the chairman John Radford, the Stank CEO chief executive and your right-hand lieutenant Ben Futcher in a big meeting uh, with the, uh, the personnel aforementioned. How did that meeting go? It was fantastic, you know. It was a meeting where um, the strategy that we 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 come in with to the football club. It was making sure that the business plan was was on track, the football plan was on track, um, that everybody knew, you know, the the targets we were after, and uh, how we was gonna, you know, reassemble, rebalance, um, and and make sure that you know going forward for the next four months that we uh, that we're all fully aware of the football plan I think that's the important thing you know recruitment can't be scatter bombed it's got to be it's got to be clear uh, it's got to be precise and and that's what we've you know we've tried to do and um, you know the chairman Carolyn and Greg are, are they're they're a massive part of that uh, process I think they always should be it's something that's important to me as a manager that we all know why we're doing what we're doing why we're playing that style why we're recruiting that player is he right for Mansfield Town has he got the ingredients um, has he got the character and has he got the quality to uh, to you know fight for a place in this football team? So uh, it was it was brilliant. You know where, where we're up to uh, a review of half a season and then the strategy behind um, this next part of the season, which again, like I said, is the business end of the season for me. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get more on perhaps potential incoming players in the coming days and weeks. But for now, thanks for your time, David, and a safe trip back. Cheers, Steve. Oh, thanks, Bud.